This is the test of hiddenness. Often, God will hide you to protect you. While you imagine that him hiding you is slowing you down. You see, you're in danger when you begin to look at someone else and you say, well, maybe you, maybe you look at a general in the faith who inspired you or your pastor, your leader, your parents. And you say things like, well, well, when they were my age, they were doing this. When they were my age, they had already reached this point. When they were my age, they had already written this many books or had this many crusades or had a program or whatever. You compare. But you have to realize that when God hides you, it's for a purpose. Often that hiding is to protect you. Because if you develop too soon, or if exposure comes before the intended moment, or at, a, at an intensity that's not supposed to happen, but now you're actually slowing yourself down. Nothing will slow you down quite like a shortcut. Because you think you're saving time, you think you're catching up, you think you're making up for lost time, when all the while you're just adding to your heartache because that exposure that comes before its time will actually slow down the call. And you may say, nothing can slow down the call of God in my life. Sure, in terms of God's ultimate destiny for you, but if you're talking about the human timeline and time from the human perspective, yes, our disobedience, our rushing, our fighting, our resistance, that can... That can extend the timeline, at least on our end. Now, God can make up for the time, but you're still going to have to go through what you have to go through. And I thank God sometimes, many times, all the time, actually. I thank God all the time that I didn't have the exposure I have today back then. Now, I wanted it back then. Lord, I want to reach the masses for you. My motives were in the right place. I want to preach to as many people. I want to reach more. I want to see more souls saved. But God kept me hidden. You know that I wrote a blog every week for quite a while. I don't remember now how long I wrote a blog for, and I literally had zero readers, like zero people would read it, but I would write the blog anyway. When I first started live streaming, live streaming wasn't even a thing. We had to rent special software in order to be able to live stream. We had this whole elaborate setup to be able to get the broadcast on and nobody would watch. I remember our peak viewership, like, where we would go, wow, look at how many people watch this was like 30 people. And that's when we knew, man, now, now we really have a crowd. There's 30 people watching. And I thank God for those seasons. Here's why. It's in the season of hiddenness. Please hear this now. It's in the season of hiddenness that your motives are purified. Because in this season, in the season of hiddenness, you're either doing it because you love God or you're not doing it at all. You see, if you're in a season of hiddenness and you're doing it for praise and accolades, there'll be no longevity. You'll quit because you're not getting what you want out of it. If you're in it for the compliments of man, if you're in it for financial gain, if you're in it for status, then the season of hiddenness will weed out those who have impure motives. Why? Because in this season, either you're doing it because you love God and his people or you're not doing it at all. And many want to rush this. They want to get right to the place where they have a platform. They want to get right to the place of notoriety. They want to get all the way to the end result that they see in their minds, that they know that God has showed them. But if that comes too soon, I'll tell you right now, it will crush you. I know for a fact that if I had the criticism that I have now coming against me 10 years ago, it would have driven me insane. The emotional and mental and physical pressure that comes from being in ministry sometimes. I'll tell you, if you're not processed, it can destroy you. Like, like lifting weights. You have to start with the smaller weights. Now, I know we don't want to hear this because it seems sometimes even a little condescending, but this is the reality. You don't just go into the gym and go for the heavy weight. You have to work your way up to that. And if you go for the heavy weight up front and you don't know form and you don't know how to position yourself, and you don't know your limitations, you're going to wind up hurting yourself in a way that delays the progress. And often we delay our progress because we're trying to rush out of the season of hiddenness. The only people that knew Joseph was there, oh, hear this, please. 
The only people that knew Joseph was there were the people who were trying to keep him hidden. The only people who knew that he was in that cistern were the ones that put him there. You, you may think that your enemies are winning. You may even think that the, that the devil is winning because there's no what you would call breakthrough. But you don't know what God is doing in that season. It is in that hiddenness that your character is processed. It is in that hiddenness that your motives are purified and now you begin to do it because you love God or you don't do it at all. And this is why it's so important that we see the hiddenness, that we see these seasons. Think about David when he was tending sheep. He was hidden. Now, what if Saul knew that there was a potential replacement for him somewhere out there before the time? He probably would have tried to prevent that. He would have tried to sabotage that. And God keeps you hidden because the people who are jealous of you would try to sabotage what God is doing in your life. And that's sometimes what slows us down too. Now, I'm giving you deep things of the spirit here. These, these issues are not often talked about. And so many people are left going on these journeys, not knowing what's going on. They think God is working against them when he's actually working for them. Now, Joseph didn't know that this was actually the first step to fulfilling his dream. The dream that God gave him was being fulfilled and the plan was already in motion. It didn't look like it because he was hidden. It didn't feel like it because he was hidden. But this first step, this hiding of Joseph, that was the first step to set that plan in motion now. For your protection, God, please hear this. For your protection, God will only expose you in proportion to the purity of your motives. For your own protection, God will only expose you in proportion to the purity of your motives. Now, here's how deceitful we can be. I want to I spend just a little more time on this one. Here's how deceitful we can be. <laughs> I remember when I was praying to be used by God, like in, in, in the early years of my walk with Christ. And I say early years, but I'm still young, but th that doesn't mean I don't have earlier years. So I, I was in my earlier years of walking with the Lord. And I remember knowing this, like in my mind, I knew God won't promote me unless my, my, my motives are pure unless I'm doing this for the right reasons. So here's what I would do. And here's how, here's how self-deceptive self we can be. Here's how tricky the flesh can be. I would pray things like, Lord, I don't care if you ever promote me. I don't care if you ever use me in a great way. I just, whatever you want to do. And I would say that knowing in the back of my mind, if I pray that, maybe he'll promote me. And that's how tricky this can be. Because, because when you crucify something, when you, when you place something on the cross, you got to leave it there. And many of us try to come off that cross. We, we're, we're squirming. The, the flesh should be, sub, should be subjected, but we're squirming. It's still alive. And, 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 and it comes into this place where we just, we're just fighting the process. And we don't like that place. I, I, I'm telling you, it's not a pleasant place to be. Because you feel like you're wasting so much time, but you're not. There is no time wasted with God if in those seasons you yield to his every instruction. There's no season. Think about what God told Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah chapter 6. He said, go and tell the people to, to listen, but they're not going to hear you. See, but don't perceive. In other words, I'm sending you to be ineffective. That's what basically God told Isaiah. I'm going to just send you. You're going to talk, but no one's going to listen. You're going to speak, but no one's going to understand. And he was okay with that. What is it about anyway? Is it about exposure? Is it about popularity? Well, you'll find out. Because it's in this season that God purifies you. And by the way, by the way, you'll see often people seem to skyrocket out of the blue. And please understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that anyone who appears to have quick growth is not qualified. That's, sometimes that's what God does. But, you know, we don't always see what's going on behind the scenes. Like people tell me all the time, man, I'm so blessed by your ministry. I just found you two years ago. And in their minds, we just kind of popped into existence two years ago when we've been here for over, you know, over 20 years doing the Lord's work. I'm not upset about that because I know how that works. And, and so sometimes it appears that someone 
has overnight promotion when in fact they've been laying a foundation in hiddenness for years and years and years. But here's the reality. Sometimes God will just allow someone to be promoted because their heart's not even right in the first place anyway. He didn't call them. He didn't put, position them there. They're doing it for the fame, for the fortune. They're preaching from impure motives. He doesn't allow them to be processed because, frankly, that's part of the punishment. So it's actually in the blessing that we find hiddenness. I'm going to move on to test number two now. If this is blessing you, let me know in the comment section. Let me know how you're doing in this season or if this is making sense in terms of the hiddenness. This is test number three, discouragement. Discouragement. You know, you've heard it said that the way oil is retrieved from the olive is when the olive is crushed. And there is a great crushing that comes. But consider also the fact that to get the olive in the first place, it must be shaken from the tree. First, there's the shaking. Everything that's familiar, shaken. Everything you thought you could trust, shaken. Everything you relied on, everything you knew, everything that brought you comfort and what you perceived as stability, shaken. And you're removed from these places of familiarity so that God can show you that he was the one you should rely upon all along. God will shake the things that you trust more than him. God will remove you from familiar situations if that familiarity becomes your source of peace. Because you need to learn to have your peace come from him, your trust based on him. So first you're shaken from familiar. I'm talking to someone right now. I know I am. First, you're shaken from the familiar. Confusion. I don't know who to trust. I don't know who is real. I don't know what is real. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do now. I feel like everything in my life that, that was familiar, that was stable, that was consistent, it's all gone now. And I feel like my whole world has changed. That's the shaking. And then the crushing. The heaviness, the discouragement, the trials, the heartache, the betrayal. That's a part of it. Now, keep in mind that the crushing doesn't produce the oil. The crushing only reveals it. In trials, whatever is truly in you comes out. When you're being pressed by the trials and tribulations of life, what is in you comes out. It's revealed. Trials don't create anointings. Trials reveal anointings. Trials don't give you character per se, though there could be an argument made there. And in some instances, yes, it could. We could talk about that later. But trials, more than anything, reveal that character. So when we are crushed, what is within us is revealed. Now, this is the test of discouragement, my friend. This is when people betray you. This is when the ones that you thought were with you leave. I've, I've gone through these seasons and believe me, they're not fun. Seasons where the people you thought would back you don't. Where the people you thought who were with you turn against you. And sometimes you don't even know why. Like there are, there are a handful of pastors I could name who last I checked, we were on great terms. There was no issues. And I'm not talking about anybody, you know, I'm talking about like from years ago, like when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, people I thought we were on great terms with. Suddenly I find out they, they, they do not, they, they don't, they, they, they can't stand me. I'm going, well, what happened? I don't know. People you thought would, would remain with you don't. And th that's really the pain point, isn't, isn't it? Because, because you, 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 you could accept betrayal from people in general. But betrayal hurts the most when it was the one you least expected. Betrayal hurts the most when, you th when it comes from the one who you thought was the confidant, who you thought, okay, if others betray me, I'll always have this one. And that comes. I've had those seasons in life. And sure, God will bring friends around you, people around you who will will not betray you that happens 
but people begin to slander you. You know what the worst part of slander is? It's not even the people who slander you. Slander, lies, gossip, that's, that's one thing. What hurts the most is the people who believe the slander just because somebody said it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've watched as preachers and teachers and ministers are bashed. And, and all it takes is a simple claim. Well, that person's false. And you look at the comment section. Oh, they are? Oh, my goodness. I never knew. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to stop following them thinking, you just believed that? You heard it, they said it, and you just said, well, I'm going to believe it. Why? Or don't you realize that ego and pride and personality and perception all plays a role in these conflicts? And perhaps you've dealt with this. Family comes against you. Friends come against you. Fellow ministers come against you. You know who it was that was the harshest to me, the meanest to me, when I was just beginning in ministry? It wasn't the atheist. It wasn't the unbeliever. The people who came the hardest against me were seasoned pastors who were jealous by what God was doing in my life. To this day, the people who come hardest against me are jealous ministers of the gospel. Now, you can't dwell on that too long. You can't let that become, you know, what your preaching is about, your teaching is about. You don't just, just leave it, leave it to the Lord, but, but you will face it. You look, you, you get saved, you lose some ungodly friends. It's a fact. You get saved, you're going to lose some, some unbelievers as friends. But you start walking in the call of God, you're going to lose some lukewarm friends too. Oh, I need to say that again. <laughs> That's going to set somebody free. I know it. You, you, you get saved. You're going to lose some unbelievers as friends. But you start walking in the call of God, you're going to lose lukewarm friends to who do you think you are? Why do you think you're special? And it's exposing the compromise in them because they're not willing to go after everything that God's given to them. They'll criticize you so that they feel better about themselves. Here's the reality. When people attack you, there will be people who believe those attacks. You're just going to have to deal with that. When, when people slander you, there will be people who believe the slander and you're just going to have to deal with that. That's, that's a part of it. There's, there's no controlling that. You can explain yourself a thousand different times and for every time you explain yourself, there'll be 10 more reasons that you give them to attack you. They'll attack the explanation for the explanation. And I'm not just talking about fellow ministers. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about betrayal and discomfort and disconnection and isolation. I'm talking about a financial struggle. I'm talking about not seeing fruit for a long period of time. And here's the thing is persistence doesn't even begin until you feel like giving up. Oh, yeah, we say, Lord, anything you want me to do. Anywhere you want me to go, whatever you want me to become, you, you, you tell me, Lord, I'll do it. And then and the discouragement comes and we don't realize how hard it was actually going to be. Difficulty. There, there's, there's, there's emotional weight. There's mental cloudiness, like, like thoughts bombarding. Oh, and the enemy, the devil will speak. Oh, <laughs> the devil, demons will talk. They love to talk. It's about all they can do to a Christian. Talk, 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 talk. And they get into your head. And then people curse you, supposedly, even though their words have no power over you. They, they, they speak things. And the moment you begin to believe in the power of that curse, now that's, that's a mental block now. And you're just, everything you see is perceived through what you think is a curse. And you're just discouragement. Heaviness, loss of motivation. It will come. But it's a test. It's a test. And it's, hear me now, it's only a season. It's only a season, my friend. I want to say that again because it's, it's for someone listening right now. It's only a season. He who begun a work in you is faithful to complete it. 
He will complete the work. He will accomplish his purpose. He will use your life. You're going to go through discouragement. You're going to feel like quitting. There were seasons of life where I didn't even feel like walking on the platform. I didn't even want to do it. I said, maybe, how many times did I say it, Steve? Just where, you know, in, in those difficult seasons, you remember some of those. And I would say, why can't I just go work at like, like at a Walgreens and be a manager and just have a nine to five and just be a, be a, be a Christian who just witnesses to my friends and family? No, my friend, we have work to do. We have work to do. There's a call to fulfill. And the discouragement you sense now, my friend, hear me. It's, 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 it's doing something in you that can't be replaced. You, you can't replace it. I used to say to the Lord, Lord, I want every bit of the anointing that you have for my life. This was one of my prayers when I was like 12 years old. I said, I want every bit of the anointing that you have for my life. I want every last drop. Pour it out on me, Lord. Every last drop. And then I said this to him. I said, Lord, in the seasons when I feel like quitting, in the seasons when that mental and emotional anguish is more than I feel like I can bear, in those seasons, Lord, remind me of what I prayed. Remind me that I prayed for every last drop. And then seasons come. And the Lord says to me, you wanted every last drop. You talk about crushing. People see the miracles. People sense the presence on your life. Oh, but there's crushing. There's a price to pay. You see, salvation is free. But the call of God to ministry will cost you everything. Salvation is free, but the call of God into ministry will cost you everything. Everything. The glory that rests on you. I'm going to give you secrets of the kingdom right now. The glory that rests on you comes in proportion to your brokenness. The glory that rests on you comes in proportion to your brokenness. You ever get frustrated with where you're going or how there's no progress? One of the quickest ways to get unstuck is to just take a step of faith. Do what God said to do. And we'll leave it there for now. Father, I pray that you would help your people to pass their tests. Holy Spirit, remind them of when they face these trials and tests in their lives. Remind them that it's only a test. Mold their character. Shape them into the image of Christ, I pray, that they might be more like Jesus, moment by moment. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the privilege of serving. We ask that you would give us strength and discernment Help us to pass our tests. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, if you enjoyed that and you think other people need to hear it, make sure you leave a like right now and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and do click that notification bell when you subscribe. Now